Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome everyone. We always start with a little little singing. This is a Rosh Chodesh Adar Fabrengen. This Thursday night and Friday, and Friday night and Shabbos, two-day Rosh Chodesh. Misha Nichnas Adar Marvin Besimcha. So we're going to get ready for the month of Adar. So first of all, I want to uh, dedicate this class to a Lefua Shlema, to our Rebbe, Rebbe Yitzchak Fivish, Ben Brian and Malka. We should have a Rafua Shlema. We should all continue to, to pray for him, to daven for him. Baruch Hashem, he is getting better and stronger, but still need lots of, uh, lots of prayers. So I want to start with one of Rav Ginsburg's many, many nigunim. Uh, if you're aware, I don't know, at this point there's probably at least 40 music discs of his original music. And I picked this one because it has the same root as Adar. This is a Adar Fabrengen. And in, in, in this, it's the 93rd Psalm, if anyone wants to follow it, it's the 93rd Psalm. And we, it's the song of Friday, Yom Shishi, that the Levim used to say in the temple. And we say it uh, Kabbalat Shabbat. And so the words are Mikolot Maim Rabim, Adirim mishpere yam, adir b'marom Hashem. More than the 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 the, the sounds, the vo the great voices of uh, like of water. Adirim mishpere yam, even more mighty than the crashing of the waves. Adir b'marom Hashem. God above is like the mightiest. So the word for mighty is adir, which is the same root as adar. So that's one of the things we'll be discussing tonight is the, the root of this word adar. So I thought it was appropriate to sing one of Rob Ginsburg's songs that has this word in it. Me kolot ma'im rabim adirim mishmereyam adir b'marom ha'ashem adir b'marom ha'ashem for the month of Adar. 
So I, 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 I'm going to mention now, and I'll mention at the end, this is the first of what's going to be a weekly class now. And the weekly class will be every Tuesday, 7 o'clock Israel time. And it's going to be called Seasons of the Soul. And we're going to be looking at the months, the holidays, and significant events as we follow the Jewish calendar through, through, the, through the whole year. So we're going to start tonight, as, as we'll do every month, that since we have a lunar calendar, every month has its own energy. And what we want to do is we want to connect to that energy. So the question is, well, how do we do that? So the most obvious answer is almost every month has either, a, we'll call it a minor holiday or a major holiday. So every holiday has its energy. So we connect to the whole month through the holiday. But it's much more than that. What we're going to look at tonight, and, we, and for those who have been coming to the Fabrengans that we've been doing for many months now, we take the, the signs, the symbols, the associations that have developed over the years, beginning with the Sefer Yitzira, which is perhaps the most ancient of all Jewish Kabbalistic texts, and later different uh, sages, rabbis, mystics, added other associations to each month. And by connecting to these associations, that's how we connect to the energy of the month. That's why it's, it's so important. Baruch Hashem, there are actually many, many books. You can go online and get all of this information. But every month has a series of associations. So in the limited time that we have tonight, we're going to go through these associations. And they're like the key to unlocking the energy of every month. And to connect to the energy, we're in tune with, with what's happening in the, not just the physical worlds, but the spiritual worlds by connecting through these associations. So we're going to start with the letter of the month. <coughs> Excuse me. Each of the months, according to the Sefer Yitzira, was created through a specific letter. So the letter of the month of Adar is a kuf. This is what a kuf looks like when written in a Sefer Torah. And according to tradition, this part of the kuf is a Zion. You can see it's a clearly it's a Zion. And this, according to tradition, is a Reish. Even though it continues like this, according to tradition, it's, it's a Reish. So the letter Kuf is made up of actually of two different letters, a Reish and a Zion. So we learn that Reish in Zion is the word Raz. Raz means secret, it, like the secrets of the Torah. Raz is Gematria 207. 207 is the Gematria of Or, light. It's the Gematria of Ein Sof, the infinite uh, essence of God the infinite light of God, or Ein Sof, it's the same gematria. And it's also the gematria of Adon Olam. Everyone knows the song, in, or the, the prayer in the morning, Adon Olam, Asher Malach. Adon Olam also equals 207. So all of these equal the Resh and the Zion of the letter Kuf. And according to Sefer Yitzhira, the month of Adar was created through this letter. So what does that tell us? So if you take the word Adar, 
almost all the Hasidic Rebbe's make a drush and they put like a hyphen between the two syllables. A dar. Dar means to dwell. <clears throat> means to to live, to dwell. The a is aleph. And in many places, you know, we have the expression master of the world. Rabono shall olam. Master of the world. At the time of the Gemara, they had a similar phrase. It was called alufo shall olam. The aleph. The aleph of the world. The master of the world. Alufo shall olam. So adar means the a the Aleph comes to dwell. It comes down to dwell. If you take the, the Dalit and the Resh of Adar and you switch them around, it's red, which means to go down. You're red. The Aleph dwells. The Aleph comes down. This is one of the greatest secrets of, of Purim, that... And remember, we're going to be meeting every week. And so there's, we have lots of time to go into the depths of Purim. But I'm going to go back over this, the idea of the infinite coming down into the finite is one of the greatest secrets of Adar. The whole idea has to do with the dressing up on Purim. There are many, many secrets that we're going to get to. These are like teases <laughs> so that, that, that people will come back. But I just want to show the, the kuf again because this idea of the, the aleph coming down is this form because of all of the 22 letters the kuf is the only one that goes below the line. So this is the idea of the, the aleph coming down into this world. Again, we'll, we'll go over that, over that more. Now, one of, one of the secrets, in, and it applies very much to Purim, is that two words that have like pretty opposite meanings, both begin with a kuf. One is kadosh, holiness, kadusha, and the other one is klipa, which means uh, shells, that which uh, hides. And in Kabbalah, klipa usually has a, a negative connotation that the klipa are those shells that uh, prevent us from getting to holiness. The, the shells of, of, of physical material reality, which sometimes blind us to the spiritual uh, treasures that it's hiding. And again, this has a lot to do with Purim and dressing up. Because when we hide our face, it's as if we're, we're putting on a klipa. We're, we're, we're hiding. And of course, we know that in the Megillah, God's name is not mentioned. God is very, very hidden in the, in the whole story. So going back to the song we sang from Rob Ginsburg from the 93rd Psalm, so what's the connection of adir, meaning strong and mighty? Is because Mordechai and Esther had to exhibit incredible strength in order to overturn the uh, the the, uh, the tachnit, the uh, plan of of Haman. It took an enormous mesira nefesh, total giving, to the point that Esther says, "Im avadati avadati." If I'm lost in my attempt to save the Jews, then I'm lost. 
Well, that takes someone giving, ready to give their, their lives. So Adar is actually a time of, of, of great potential strength. There's tremendous strength in this, in this month. And it's the strength of Kedusha to overcome Klippa. Because if you look at the, the, some of the goings-on during Purim, let's say you don't know anything about Purim, nothing, and you would be dropped into Yerushalayim in a regular year, not a COVID year, in a regular year, on Purim, and you would see the goings-on you would like, this is spirituality? This is holy? Someone would think like, this is the craziest unholiness thing I've ever seen. But if you're on the inside of Purim, then, then the joy is so holy, is so holy. Again, we're gonna learn more about that. But since we mentioned joy, in the Sefer Yitzira, along with saying which month is created with which letter, each month has a sense. In Hebrew, a chush has a sense. Ah, you know what? I just realized something. Ah, Eliezer? Okay, so he's recording. I can't believe I forgot to press record. <laughs> Okay, I'm counting on Eliezer here. Okay, I'm continuing. So in the Sefer Yitzirah, they, uh, along with the letter is a chush, a sense. So the sense of the month of, of Adar is schok, which literally means uh, a joy. In modern Hebrew, it's more like a joke, having fun. But it, it, it doesn't mean what we think of fun. It means simcha. It means joy. So the, the sense of this month is joy. And so we, we know, Misha nichnas adar marvin besimcha. When adar comes in, we increase our joy. And this has to do with the sense of the month. The month, and, and remember, Sefer Yitzira comes way before the holiday of Purim. Sefer Yitzira is, is, well, according to tradition, it goes back to Avram Avinu. So there's something in Adar that, in a sense, drew Purim into it, not the opposite. It's not that we had a holiday of Purim and then uh, we associated it with, with uh, joy. So R Rabbi Ginsburg says there's five levels of joy. Now, if we had a different paradigm, we could maybe do it differently. In this paradigm, there are five levels of joy. We'll start from the bottom. First, there's what's called simchat midit, or like Rabbi Nachman says, mitzvah gedola liot besimcha tamid. It's an it's an ongoing mitzvah to be joyous every day, our whole lives. It's a mitzvah to be joyous. Why? Because we have so much to be grateful for, even when things seemingly are not going our way. We have so much to be grateful for, and so we have reason to be joyous. The next level is the, uh, the joy of the holidays. It says in the Torah a number of times that we should be joyous in the holidays. So that's a special kind of, of joy. Now, this includes Shabbat. But Shabbat has its own quality called oneg, pleasure. But right now we're talking about joy. So there's the joy of the holidays. 
One step above that is the joy of Sukkot. Why? Because in the Torah, three different times it tells us to be joyous during Sukkot. And in our in our prayers, we call Sukkot Zman Simchatenu, the time of our great joy. What's above that? We're getting up to the fourth level is Simchat Torah. The whole holiday is even called after Simcha. It's, it's just all joy. And I'm saying all of this because the highest level is the joy of Purim. The joy of Purim is beyond bounds, beyond limits. And that will we'll discuss much more in coming classes. But today I want to go through all of the associations with the month to give a bigger picture. And then over the next few weeks as we get uh, closer to Purim, we'll delve much deeper into some of these ideas. Now, the Sefer Yitzira also says that there's a part of the body associated with each month. The part of the body associated with the month of Adar is the spleen. Now, in the Gomorrah, they say a very interesting thing about the spleen, that the spleen uh, produces black bile. And this black bile is associated with depression. That... The, even even the term black bile, we make association with something like depression. So here's an amazing thing. An amazing thing is, in according to biology, according to nature, according to the seasons, the most apropos time to be depressed is the month of Adar. Why? It's the last month of the year, uh, the months beginning from uh, Nisan. We're in the middle of winter. We're getting actually a little bit towards the end of winter when people get very antsy, very uh, um, housebound. Now, we've been housebound because of the shutdown. <laughs> We've been really housebound. But uh, my daughter, who is living in Philadelphia right now, just sent me pictures of the snowstorm that they're having there. And it's like the biggest snowstorm in years in Philadelphia. And it's like, like we're talking about in, in some places like knee high. It's like, so a lot, of, and it actually, it's, it's, been, it's been a long winter. So. At the, by Adar, it's like, you know that feeling, like after the shutdown, like, I, I got to get out of here. I need, I need some, some air. I need some greenery. I need some space. So according to nature, this month would be the most fitting, not fitting, but it, it just, if you were going to get depressed, this month naturally could lead you to that. Yet what's what's the sense of the month? Is joy. And this joy overrides nature. Remember we have the expression, Ein Mazali Yisrael, there's no constellation. Nature doesn't rule over us unless we let it. If we don't let it, then it doesn't. So this term is probably the most important term in the entire Megillah, is Nahafochu. Nahafochu means it got all turned around. In other words, Haman wanted to destroy the Jewish people, for real. It's not a story. It's not, it's not a parable. He wanted to destroy the Jewish people. Genocide. And he came very, very close. 
We know just 75 years ago, there was also a plan of genocide. And, and they also came very close. But in this Purim story, it got turned around. Naha Fochu. It got turned around. So this is the potential depression of Adar gets turned around through joy. This is such an important idea that we can connect to. Okay, now it's really, really time to make a l'chaim. My wife insists that I have to make a l'chaim at these fabrengans because what would a fabrengan be without a little l'chaim? So I'm making a l'chaim with the blessing that it is definitely, been, I see someone ho is holding their cup there. <laughs> l'chaim, l'chaim, l'chaim. <laughs> We've all had a long year talking about feeling um, shut in. And for real, many, many, many people have, have experienced either bouts or days or prolonged depression because of the situation that many people are in, especially people living alone and or having health problems. It's really been a challenge, a real challenge. So I just want to make a blessing that the, when we say, Misha Nichnas Adar Marvin Basimcha, that it's time for us to, to win this battle against COVID. It's time for us to, 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 to get out. I wouldn't even say go back to normal. I don't want to go back to normal. I want something much better, much greater. I think we all do. So may we all experience this month should now focal should turn everything around. Okay, now, also in the Sefer Yitzira, it tells us what the astrological sign is for every month. This is a whole discussion, but many people think that uh, Jews will, won't touch astrology with a 10-foot pole. Part of that is true, but the Talmud is full of astrological associations. L'chaim from the Sarah Sandler. <laughs> so every month has an astrological sign. In uh, English or the Western world, it's Pisces. And in Hebrew, it's called Dagim. Why? Because the sign of Pisces are two fish. The fish. So in Hebrew... The, the, the sign of this month is called Dagim. So there's many, many connections. One is I, I learned from Rav Ginsburg that the, the word Purim is a combination of Peru or Revu. <clears throat> Be fruitful and multiply. Purim. Peru or Revu. What's the connection? Uh, be fruitful and multiply goes back to the, the creation that God uh, blessed Adam. Adam at that point was Adam and Chava, Adam and Eve, to be fruitful and multiply. But if you look earlier, the first uh, uh, living things that were blessed to be fruitful and multiply were the fish. The fish were the first to be blessed to be fruitful and multiply. And that's one <clears throat> of the reasons that on Rosh Hashanah we eat, we have fish. It's one of the simanim, we eat fish. We also eat the head of a fish. That we should be the rosh, the lola, the zanav. We should be the head and not the tail. 
But every Shabbos, many, many Jews have a, have a, a custom of eating fish. Some people in every meal. Doesn't mean it, it, it's the main dish, but that's where gefilte fish comes in. Gefilte fish became famous because of Jews eating fish on Shabbos. And the idea is not just physically being fruitful and multiplied. The Alter Rebbe said, along with the, 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 the simple blessing of a family being fruitful and multiplying, he said it means that one Jew should make another Jew, meaning that one Jew should always reach out to another Jew and to inspire them, to share with them, to give, to invite, that a Jew should make another Jew. That's a type of Purvu. So the month of Purim is a month of being fruitful and multiplying. And this has to do with something that hopefully we'll get more into is again, it's the last month of the year. And it says in the Sefer Yitzira, Na'ud Sofan B'Techilatan B'Techilatan B'Sofan. The end is wedged in the beginning and the beginning in the end. So in other words, in a certain way, what gives birth to the beginning of the next year, because Nisan is the first of the months, it's Purim. And this is one of the secrets that every 19 years, we add a extra month in order that the lunar calendar and the solar calendar should be in sync. It needs to be in sync because we're told a number of times in the Torah that Pesach has to come out in the spring because in spring we uh, got out of Egypt. I just see someone put a chat and said, what's the gematria of Samach? Samach is a is 60 and it's the 15th letter. It's the 15th letter, but it's gematria is 60. So this extra month is, it, the year is called Shana Mu'uberet, a pregnant year, because a second Adar has been added. So there is something about Adar, even in a regular year, that gives birth to the uh, beginning of the next year. And the, in, especially in a, in a year that has two Adars, it's a pregnant year. So this idea of Peru or Ravu, now this goes along very well with the mitzvot uh, of Purim, the idea of giving Mishloach Manot, of sending gifts of food to friends and neighbors and giving charity to the poor. This is what the altar Rebbe meant when he said, a Jew should make another Jew, should reach out to another Jew. Well, there's really no holiday where it's, it's, it, it's such a central part of the holiday is to give to others. And the Rambam says clearly that if you have a choice between um, spending money on making a huge feast for Purim, which is a mitzvah, or giving money to the poor, you should give money to the poor. Not instead of a feast, but if you only have so much money, it's better to give to the poor. Why? Because that will bring them joy. And there's nothing more joyous than giving someone else joy. Okay, so that's a little bit about the, the astrological sign. It's a water sign. Remember, the, the, the year goes through a, uh, a triple of fire, earth, air, and water signs. And so Pisces, Dagim, obviously Dagim live in water. So there's a very, very beautiful connection here with Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu, he was, his name, Moshe, was Mina Mayim Mishitihu, 
from, from the water he was drawn. So there's a deep connection with Moshe Rabbeinu and, um, and water. And there's a very deep connection with Adar. Why? Because according to tradition, he was born and died on the same day, the seventh of Adar. So it's not only that he was drawn from the water, and what lives in the water? Fish. So that's why in, in a few places, Moshe Rabbeinu is, is referred to as the Daga Gadol, like the great fish. He's like the great fish, because he's drawn from the water, and he's very connected to um, the month of Adar. He, is born and passes away. Now who, when it says uh, uh, one Jew should make another Jew, if you would ask if there was one Jew that you could say that Moshe Rabbeinu, as it were, made or shared with, it would be Joshua, Yoshua. Because it says Yoshua took over for him at God's uh, command. And it says in the Torah that, that Yoshua never left Moshe's tent. He, he, he not only learned from him, but he, he served him. He was his gabai. He was his misharet. And, and that's why he, he merited to take over for him. It's not that, just that he learned, but he, he, he witnessed how Moshe Rebbeinu did everything. So what's Yeshua's name in, in the Torah? Yeshua bin Nun. In Aramaic, nun means fish. So it's brought down, there's a question, was his father really called nun? Or is this referring to Moshe Rabbeinu? He was the son of nun, because it says that if you teach someone Torah, it's you're like their, they're your child, you're their father. So Yeshua being Nun, now it, it doesn't have to be a contradiction. It could be that his father's name really was Nun, but it's also referring to uh, Moshe. So these are all connected to the idea of the fish and this month and, and, and the water. And one other connection, in the Gemara, there is a discussion of What's the name of Mashiach? What will his name be? One of the opinions is Yunun. Yunun, from the word Nun. Yunun. So what do we say about Moshe Rabbeinu? Hu agoel rishon, hu agoel acharon. He is the first redeemer, and he will be the last redeemer. In other words, the soul of Mashiach will partly be the soul of Moshe. He will re return, reincarnate into the Mashiach. And his name is Yanun. So these are all very deep connections of, of Adar, water, Moshe, fish. They're all, all very, very connected. Okay, we only have a few more minutes here. I just want to mention at this point, again, for those people who came in late, that this will be a weekly class now, uh, learning about the months uh, and the holidays of every month and significant events. And so everyone is invited. Tell your friends. We'll be at the same time, same station. And I do have to say, uh, tonight, I'm gonna, I have to end a little bit early. Usually, we would go to almost 8 o'clock, and then I would for sure un unmute everyone and have questions and comments. Before this uh, class was set, I had already accepted a different offer. Uh, it's a closed group, so it won't be broadcast anywhere. And so... I, I can only go five more minutes, and then I have to go immediately to this other class. But um, 
I, I really appreciate your, your all coming. Um, hold on one second. I just want to see. I'm just looking at different people that are here. I know a lot of people also come to the Sunday um, uh, Parsha class. You're all welcome to do that. Very welcome. Um, what I'm going to do now is in the chat, this is in case someone doesn't have, I'm going to type our website. And, and now our email and uh, and invite everyone to um, to uh, be in touch, to write, to come to our website, take advantage of everything that is there. Uh, for those who get our weekly Torah Digest, you can you can sign up for our weekly Torah Digest. We just made all of our music free for listening, free for downloading. Hundreds of uh, teaching videos, hundreds of audio classes, all the holidays, all the parshas, poetry, meditation, stories, everything. So. Um, So I'm going to end with a, a blessing, and then I want to sing one more song, because I want to have a really joyous nigan. Many of you know this nigan. <clears throat> sing along wherever you are. But I just want to say again that it's really, really, really time to, to get out, of, not, of, not just of our houses, but to get to a new level, it's really the world needs new light. That's the name of our organization, is Or Chadash. We need a new light. And I think spiritually, one of the, one of the reasons that all of this is happening is a sign to us is that normal, okay, we get uh, like homesick for normal, but we all know that we want more than what we used to call normal. We want Mashiach. We want a world of peace. We want to be more spiritual, more whole, more holy. We want to love people more. We want to be loved more. We want to be closer to Hashem. So this should be the month. This should be the month. Hopefully see you next week. 